Welcome to Autopilot and our series of how-to videos. While there are many modes and even more capabilities of Autopilot, follow, especially when combined with Autopilot's focus options, can create remarkable footage normally impossible to capture without teams of people and very expensive equipment. Follow enables Autopilot to engage your Phantom 3 or Inspire 1 to follow an established leader. You can define the angle, the altitude, and the distance of the quadcopter in relation to the leader, as well as what the quadcopter's camera will focus on. Before we get into how to effectively use Autopilot's follow mode, I'm going to talk about what differentiates Autopilot's implementation and provide some basic guidance that you must consider before starting to use follow. One of the biggest differentiators for follow is the dynamic altimeter reference, which allows Autopilot to identify a moving reference point based upon a device's barometer or GPS. Using the soon-to-be-released airspace feature, this can also be based upon a variety of multiple stationary or moving objects. This enables you or the leader to change altitude safely during follow mode, as well as other moving modes. While there are other products that offer similar functionality to follow mode, they are limited by the lack of a dynamic altitude reference, which can have safety implications. Watch this quick video that was provided to me by David Portenson, who is driving up a hill while using his Phantom 3 in the stock follow capability. As you can see, the Phantom 3 did not rise in altitude as the follow vehicle went up the hill, causing it to smash in the hill. This would not have happened with autopilot. I'm going to show you one more example about this, but I want to stress again how follow builds on autopilot's focus mode to intelligently drive the gimbal and camera as well as the quadcopter. Another one of our users, Rune Venz, did an interesting experiment driving in a mountainous area being followed by his Phantom 3. He did it once with the stock DJI software and then did it again with the autopilot follow software. This footage shows him doing it with stock. According to Rune, flying his P3 with autopilot was a completely different experience, as the P3 automatically adjusted altitude as the car went up and down the hills, and you can also see how much better autopilot is at automatically maintaining focus on the lead car. If you watch the two footages next to each other, on the left is DJI's stock software, on the right is the autopilot software using follow mode, you can see how much better Autopilot is. I think the footage is smoother. It provides better focus on the lead vehicle, keeping it center in the screen. And it also allows the pilot to not worry so much that the altitude of the quadcopter is going to be too low to hit a wire or even hit the, uh, the mountain itself. Bottom line, I think this feature is a deal breaker if you're going to use a follow-like feature and change altitude, as well as if you're looking for more accurate focus and more interesting shots. In conjunction with dynamic altimeter, Autopilot also offers altitude priority, which is the maximum allowable difference between the current aircraft altitude and the target altitude. If the difference is exceeded either positively or negatively, Autopilot will ascend or descend to close the gap before performing other operations such as lateral movement, and a visual warning will also be displayed on the flight dashboard. If the aircraft is in motion when altitude priority is activated, you may see the aircraft stop abruptly. Autopilot must assume that the danger is imminent and therefore it prefers powered braking over a smooth flight. If you haven't already, please take a moment to watch the Autopilot overview and user interface overview videos, as well as the other videos, to see how well thought out the user interface is and how you can plan out your missions before you take off. I will also take you through the autopilot follow user interface so you can see how easy it is to change variables on the fly, both using the screen and the joystick. Finally, realize that follow is the predecessor to new and exciting capabilities that will be implemented across autopilot, such as airspace. With airspace, you'll not only be able to follow a leader carrying a transmitter, but any of multiple identifiable GPS devices. These devices can be phones, other external GPS devices, or even quadcopters. As an example, you could have one quad following a leader and a second quad orbiting around the first quad while maintaining camera focus on the lead vehicle or even the quad. More on this amazing feature when it's soon rolled out. 
In addition to other pre-flight planning and configuration discussed in the other videos, there are a few things to ensure that you keep in mind specific to follow as well as when you're using other computer-based flight modes. More so than any other mode, spend extra time thinking about where you're going to fly before you take off. Are you changing altitude by going up and down hills, or is the altitude going to remain consistent either because the leader isn't moving or because you're in the water or you're following a boat? In fact, unless you are on water, you are probably going to change altitude and may not even realize it. Even a gradual slope can result in a significant altitude change over a long enough course. You should think about how high do you need to be to ensure that you don't hit trees, power lines, etc. You should also think about where you want the quad to be, in front, behind, etc. Finally, I'd take the time to think about where your home point is so you know where the quad is going to return to if you lose connectivity with your transmitter. You may have seen other drone manufacturers that are suggesting that you should fly close and tight to get a good follow shot. I personally wouldn't fly my Phantom 3, or especially my Inspire, close to any person or vehicle. It's my advice when using autopilot on the P3 or the Inspire to err on the side of safety. Go higher and further, not closer, than you think you'll need to be just to be safe. Realize that, especially if you're filming in 4K, you can always use your video editing software to crop the footage to zoom in closer. If there's even a chance that you're going to be changing altitudes, I recommend that you use a device with an altimeter. At this point, it's the iPad Air 2, the 6, the 6 Plus, or the 6S, or the 6S Plus. The remote control GPS does not include altitude information at this time. Please remember that. Autopilot can utilize several different instruments to measure both aircraft and device altitude, including absolute and relative altitude. Given your desired flight plan, it is crucial to select and properly calibrate the appropriate instruments to ensure a safe flight and produce a well-framed video. The new Engage sequence in Wizard that will be described soon provides a more intuitive and question-based format to ensure that you're selecting the right item. Be sure to review the UI and the Engage sequence before you try and take off. If you've played with the other modes within Autopilot, I think you'll find the user interface of Autopilot's follow mode very easy to understand. Outside of the focus strategy, which works the same as the other modes, there really are a few things to be aware of. First, the altitude. Depending upon your setting when you engage, it can mean slightly different things. If you've stated that the leader is not changing altitude, the altitude will mean the distance from ground level. If you've stated that the leader is changing altitude, the altitude will be based upon the current relative altitude above the leader. In other words, if you set the altitude to 50 feet, and the leader is at 25 feet from ground level, and then moves to 100 feet from ground level, the quadcopter will move from 75 feet to 150 feet in the air. Second, the distance. The distance is the distance between the quadcopter and the leader. I will show you how you can change this both via the joystick as well as via the tablet. Third, the bearing reference, which is either absolute or coarse bearing. Using absolute bearing reference, the bearing angle of the quadcopter in relation to the leader is relative to true north. You can set the quad to follow from the north, the west, the east, or the south. Using course bearing, the bearing angle is relative to the direction that the leader is moving. That is either in front, behind, to the left, or to the right of the leader. Note that the leader must be moving faster than 3 miles an hour or 5 kilometers an hour for accurate course readings. Let's discuss the new Engage sequence that has been modified to be more intuitive and more based upon how the quadcopter will be used. It is now a series of very simple questions. The questions and screens will also be based upon whether the device you have has a barometer or not, specifically an iPad Air 2 or an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus. Note that this new sequence and altimeter settings are applicable not only for follow mode, but for modes like orbit, where you can select the operator as the center. Let's start by assuming that I'm using an iPad Air 2. When you click on Engage, the first thing Autopilot shows is the checklist that you must select. You should select View Checklist, and it will bring up the Flight School checklist, just to ensure that you're doing everything right. If you select Done, Autopilot will then ask if you're going to be a fixed or a moving operator. Selecting fixed 
will base the altitude upon the takeoff altitude of the quad. However, remember, if you even think you're going to be moving, check the second option. If you do select moving operator, you're then presented with a question as to whether you're changing altitude or a fixed altitude. If you select fixed altitude, it will base the altitude again on the takeoff height of the quadcopter. If you select changing altitude and you have a device with a barometer like an iPad Air 2 or an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, it will bring up the barometer screen. The altitude of the quad will now be based upon the distance between the iPhone or tablet and the altitude of the quadcopter. If you do not have a device like an iPad Air 2 or 6 or 6 Plus that will provide barometer readings, things will actually act the same until you select moving operator and changing altitude. At this point, Autopilot will ask you to set the altitude of the quadcopter to the same as the transmitter and maintain that for 30 seconds to attempt to determine the altitude based upon the GPS location. Even if you move forward, Autopilot will still warn you that it recommends against doing this because GPS altimeters are inherently inaccurate. You can use this at your own risk or give yourself a lot of leeway to avoid problems. Bottom line again, if you're going to be changing altitudes a lot, we recommend going with a device that will provide barometer readings to our autopilot. Now let's fly. I'm going to set the Phantom 3 to follow my car. I've set the altitude to 96 feet and will adjust the distance to 74 feet via the tablet. I'll switch to intermediate mode so I'll have access to the bearing reference. I'm going to set it to absolute and then self so that the quad will continue to focus on me from the south regardless of where I go or what direction I'm facing. Now, after I engage and take off, you can see in this highly sped up clip, the Phantom and Autopilot do an excellent job of maintaining focus on me as I drive around the building. Now, you can change the altitude, the distance, or the bearing angle via the tablet or via the joystick. If I move the left remote joystick up, Autopilot will increase the altitude. Note that Autopilot is automatically yawing my Phantom 3 because the gimbal can't go 360 degrees to maintain focus upon the car. If I want to change the bearing angle, I can do this directly from the tablet, or I can push the right joystick to the left or to the right to cycle through the options. Here I'm going to switch from south to east. Autopilot immediately moves the Phantom 3 to change the direction at which the camera is facing the car. I can also push the right joystick up or down, up to increase the distance, or down to decrease. Now let's switch the bearing reference from absolute to course. I can then set the bearing angle to behind, and Autopilot will keep the quadcopter following the lead vehicle. Realize that this is a difficult example for the Phantom 3, as making 90 degree turns over short distances and moderate speeds require the Phantom 3 to adjust quickly. It honestly works even smoother on normal roads. Using follow with the Inspire 1 is even better because Autopilot can take advantage of the Inspire's gimbal to maintain smoother focus as it tracks the leader. Here I'm using absolute mode to follow the vehicle from the north. Let me switch over via the tablet from absolute to course mode and then I'm going to press behind so that the quadcopter automatically follows me from behind. And then I can use the right joystick if I want by pushing to the left or the right and actually shift the bearing angle and it automatically shifts and changes. In this case, I'm switching to the front, so it's following me from the front to the vehicle. Note that I've sped up this footage four to five times in some places to keep the video a little shorter and it still does a really nice job of keeping the footage smooth. As with other modes, you can change the focus strategy. In this case, I'm going to switch it to the joystick focus strategy and control the gimbal with the right joystick. You can also use touch and move the gimbal by touching the screen. Finally, you can even set the focus strategy to POI or point of interest and have the camera focused on something else as the quad continues to follow the lead vehicle. Even in this industrial park, Autopilot is able to create some pretty epic shots by focusing in on this large lake. When used safely, Follow can create some amazing footage that you'll absolutely treasure. While the user interface is relatively simple, the options are endless. Now get out there and fly, and we'll see you in the next video.